Okay, so we'll go back to another video. So here we have an infinite sum and we're dealing with yet again more factorials, so the more fun to that. So we have the infinite sum starting with our index at n is equal to zero of n plus one factorial divided by two n plus two factorial. So I think the first giveaway that I'm sure a lot of you guys can figure out on like taking the first step is that of course with factorials we can utilize the definition of the gamma function. So with that, we can actually, you know, put in that substitution for the gamma function, but that just leaves us the question on where do we move on from there? Well, that's a bit of a sum, that's a bit of a secret until we progress towards the video further and further. But a lot of the stuff comes from, of course, we're actually going to have to be using some um, calculus and integrals, and a special function is actually going to come up at the end to uh, simplify everything to our given value that we want to achieve for. So with that out of the way, let's actually just jump right in. So let me actually first write that in definition, of course, for factorials, that the gamma of n is the same thing written as n minus 1 factorial. So with this in mind, as mentioned, that we can actually replace our entire infinite sum with the gamma function. So in other words, that's the same thing written as infinity and is equal to zero. So over here, n plus one factorial is the same thing written as gamma of n plus two. And then under the denominator, we have gamma of two n and then plus three. So let's actually do a little bit of some creativity here and that this might actually look something a little bit difficult that we might be um, working with. But instead, let's actually multiply specifically a gamma of n plus 1 to both the numerator and denominator. So multiply and divide gamma n plus 1. So with that, we have the infinite sum n is equal 0. So of course, gamma of n plus 2 multiply with gamma of n plus 1. Under the denominator, we have gamma of 2n plus 3 multiplied by gamma of n plus one. So with that in mind, now we want to notice that, notice specifically that 2n plus 3 and then n plus 2 and gamma of n plus 1, using the little bit of a property, specifically the beta function, we can actually just replace our terms over here. So of course that still leaves us with gamma of n plus 1 under the denominator. And with that in mind, that's of course what the, of course in other words, that's specifically using the gamma, gamma function relationship to the beta function. So in other words, that's the same thing. So infinite sum n is equal zero of b so i'm actually going to write this as n plus two comma n plus one um, in case you haven't noticed that b, um, beta of n plus two n plus one or rather for two different inputs it's actually symmetric so you can actually flip the same thing around i wrote it this way purposely specifically because the next step works we're going to be working with is actually a little bit simpler to evaluate than if we were if the terms were switched the other way around you'll see where i'm coming from from here so then divided by gamma of n plus 1. So of course, keep in mind that for some two values of beta, so I'll call it the z sub 1 and then z sub 2, we're actually going to be using the specific integral representation for the gamma function, which says that this is from the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the, to the power z sub 1 minus 1, multiplied by 1 minus t, and then to the power z sub 2 minus 1, and then dt. So uh, you see where I'm coming from if I had the terms like switched from the other way around because we're actually doing a replacement over here. So what we have now, and of course, gamma of n plus one, we're actually gonna be putting back the n factorial because it you know, utilizes that definition for the factorials in the gamma relationship. So I have infinity, n is equal zero, and then now this is gonna be one divided by n factorial, and then the integral from zero to one. So we replace our inputs and put that back over here. So now I have this, so I'm gonna put this in the world of x. So I have x then to the power n plus one and then multiply with one subtract x to the power n and then multiply with dx. Okay, so with this in mind that we can actually, with convergence that I can actually interchange the integral and the, 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 sums, the summation symbol. And so now that would yield us, so I'll also put the one over n factorial back inside of our integral as well. So now what we have is the integral from zero to one of our infinite sum over here, n is equals zero of x to the power n plus one, and then times one minus x to the power n being divided by n factorial and then dx. And then what I can do is, of course, I have a x to the power n plus one, I'll factor out one of the x's and then put that outside of our summation symbol. It does not depend on our index n. So the integral from zero to one of x, then multiply with our infinite sum, n is equals zero of x to the power n multiplied with one minus x to the power n and then divided by n factorial and then dx. 
And then of course, the next thing is that notice that specifically, this is actually in terms of the Taylor series representation of the exponential function. So e to the power x is written as the infinite sum n is equal to zero of x to the power n and then divided by n factorial. So in a similar fashion, we have x and then one minus x. So we can actually just do that substitution. What that comes down to is that we have the integral from zero to one of x and then multiply with e to the power x, multiply with one subtract x and then close it off with dx. And then just simplify from here. So now I have the integral from zero to one of x to the power e or x times e to the power x and then subtract x squared and then dx. And then lastly, what I'll do is I'll actually just switch the terms around since the x squared is the leading, you know, um, leading coefficient. So I have zero to one of x and then times e to the power negative x and then plus x. And if I want to really, I can actually just factor out that negative. And in other words, that'll be the same thing as negative x squared and then minus x and then dx. Okay. So with this in mind, you might be asking yourself, how do we actually integrate such integral? So this is where the things that we're gonna have to do in terms of manipulation, such that we can actually simplify things even further. What we're gonna do here is for x squared minus x, we're actually going to complete the square. So what we do is now we just take what the leading, um, so specifically for our bx coefficient of some quadratic polynomial, we just take that then and divide by two, then square that, and then you add that same term such that it's like adding a zero term. So after doing all this, we're actually going to have the following. So we'll have the integral, so equals, Z from zero to one of x times e and then to the power negative. So x squared, then mi minus x plus one over four and then subtract one over four, then dx. So with this in mind that we can actually factor out a e to the power, so negative, negative. So e to the, e to the power one over four. So that's just a constant. So that'll just leave us with e to the power one over four multiplied with the integral from zero to one of just x times e to the negative. So notice that x squared minus x and then plus one over four can be simply reduced to just x then minus one half quantity square dx. That's what we're dealing with so far. So you'll notice that next thing I'm sure you guys can guess is we can actually per um, perform a u substitution. So we'll let u equals x minus one half. Then that simply means that du is just going to equal dx. We perform the necessary substitution such that we have e to the power one over four and then multiply with our integral. So change our bounds. I have um, x is equal to one. So that means this top is going to be one half. I have zero. So that means that's actually just going to be negative one half on the bottom. And then that just leaves us with so x replace that for u. So u then add this with one half and then multiply with e to the power negative u squared du. Hey, looks like something of a Gaussian, Gaussian function representation, right? So don't jump to conclusions yet because you might be thinking that, oh, it's just equal to square root of pi, but we're actually, that's actually for the entire real line, but we're actually dealing with negative one half and one half. So you gotta be careful on how you can come to your conclusions. So using some linearity, what I'll do is so I'll split this up. So I have e to the one over four and then the integral from one half or negative one half to one half. So first thing, so I have u and then times e to the negative u square or du. And then next is the one half um, multiply with that. So one half, then e to the power of one over four multiply with integral from negative one half to one half of just the Gaussian function e to the negative u square and then du. Okay. So this looks like a lot we're dealing with, but here's a little property that you wanna pay attention to and it'll make things a whole lot easier. Pay attention that our integrand u e to the negative u square, if you notice, notice that our integrand is actually an odd function. So when you're dealing with integrals over of an odd function with symmetric intervals, so negative one half to one half, then this is actually just going to vanish. Simply, it's just going to equal zero since you have a negative and then a positive canceling each other out in terms of area. So lastly, really is that we're just dealing with this integral over here. So one half, then e to the power of one over four, and then the inter uh, integral from negative one half to one half of e to the negative u squared and then du. And what you'll notice is that specifically, this is an even function. And if you're doing that with the symmetric, symmetric interval, you're actually doubling the area. So we can actually change this to now instead say that this is simply just gonna be two times that. So one, two times one half, so that's just one. So we're just de dealing with e to the power one over four, multiplied by the integral from zero to one half of just e to the negative u squared du, the, our Gaussian function that we're dealing with. 
And then lastly, so the last piece of it, critical information we're going to be using is that notice that this is in terms of the error function of that formulation such that the integral from zero to some real valuable x of e to the negative u squared du is simply just equal to the square root of pi divided by two multiplied by the error function of x. So that in mind, so we can actually just just place the necessary substitution. So this is just one half of the error function. So that means that our final answer is just gonna be the square root of pi divided by two multiplied by e to the power of one over four times the error function evaluated at one half. And so with that, that actually concludes our evaluation and indeed the final answer to our infinite sum dealing with the factorials yet again, some more. So yeah, there you have it. And uh, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.